Welcome to my channel. So today let us focus on one of the topic of neurophysiology that is neuromuscular junction. So in the neuromuscular junction first we will see the structure as well as the parts of the neuromuscular junction then we will shift to the neuromuscular transmission. So the neuromuscular junction by definition it is a junction between the terminal portion of a nerve and the skeletal muscle. So as you can see in this diagram that this particular area which is the exon terminal let me write it over here this is the exon terminal and second one that is this much area it is of skeletal muscle so if I tell you more precisely then neuromuscular junction which is formed by the terminal portion of the motor end plate that is this is the motor now motor now and second thing is the portion of the skeletal muscle so this is how the neuromuscular junction is formed one one end that is motor now and the second one that is the skeletal muscle now let us see the internal portion of this neuromuscular junction so in the neuromuscular junction the membrane of the motor nerve or I can say the motor axonal terminal which is termed as a presynaptic membrane so this membrane is termed as a presynaptic membrane and the membrane over the muscle fiber that is the black line which is termed as a postsynaptic membrane postsynaptic membrane and the space between the presynaptic membrane which is there as an end portion or I can say the membrane of the motor nerve which is the presynaptic membrane and the postsynaptic membrane of the muscle fiber and the space between these two is termed as a synaptic cleft synaptic cleft so now I think all the portions of a neuromuscular junction is clear to you that is the motor nerve, exon terminal, presynaptic membrane of a motor nerve, postsynaptic membrane of a skeletal muscle, and the area of the skeletal muscle. But there are few channels also that we need to remember that in the end portion of a motor nerve, we have calcium channels. That is, in this area, if I draw, we have calcium channels by which the calcium ions from the extracellular fluid come into the motor nerve and over the postsynaptic membrane we have some channels that is ligand gated sodium channel so let me draw it over here that we have ligand gated sodium channels as well as some receptors are also present over this post synaptic membrane another important thing is we have vesicles which are known as a synaptic vesicles in the motor nerve so we have a vesicles which are very much helpful in the synthesis of a neurotransmitter termed acetylcholine so these are the vesicles all the other structures which are present in a typical structure of a neuron if you have not watched that video of structure of neuron that I have made earlier earlier I will give a link in my description so you can watch that video also so these are the synaptic vesicles present in the exon terminal now let us shift to the neuromuscular transmission so in the neuromuscular transmission there are total five phases but I will explain according to the process which is occurring at the neuromuscular junction that is first process over the external terminal then into the muscle so first thing is when an action potential arrives in the exon terminal 
it opens up the calcium channels so let me write it over here that these are the calcium channels we have and when an action potential arrives it opens and calcium channels so calcium ions from extracellular fluid it enters into the exon terminal and it causes bursting of the synaptic vesicles so these synaptic vesicles they burst out because of entry of calcium ions inside the exon terminal and this bursting of the synaptic vesicles right this bursting of the synaptic vesicle is ultimately going to release a neurotransmitter from the presynaptic membrane it enters into the synaptic cleft and this neurotransmitter is termed as an acetylcholine so acetylcholine let me write it over here it is acetyl choline which is a neurotransmitter so acetylcholine as we know that in the neuromuscular junction there is no physical connection right they are not attached but we have a synaptic cleft right through which the neurotransmitter which is a chemical substance which helps in the transmission of impulses they are entering into the exon terminal so they help in the transmission of impulses from the exon terminal to the skeletal muscles so this is the function of the acetylcholine that is transferring of an impulses without any physical connection between the exon terminal and the muscle fiber so this is the acetylcholine becomes very very important for us that it it is a chemical substance and after releasing from the presynaptic membrane and it passes through the synaptic cleft it is going to attach over the receptors which are present over the post synaptic membrane that is we have many receptors over here and the acetylcholine is going to bind with those receptors now what is going to happen that when the acetylcholine binds with the receptors present over the post synaptic membrane it helps in the opening of ligand gated sodium channels that is over here these are the ligand gated sodium channels so sodium ions from the extracellular fluid it enters into the skeletal muscle now the important thing comes that when the sodium ions enter into the skeletal muscle fiber so it ultimately going to alter the resting membrane potential of a muscle for the muscle the resting membrane potential is approximately about minus 90 millivolt this is the rmp of skeletal muscle but as soon as the sodium ion enters it initiates depolarization and after the depolarization resting membrane potential it is now converted into an end plate potential and reaches up to the minus 60 millivolt now you may think in that direction that when a sodium ion enters into the uh, skeletal muscle fiber so it ultimately initiates action potential but here in this case it is going to develop the end plate potential now we give a typical terminology that is the end plate potential because this end plate potential which is non-propagative normally what we have studied that is action potential it is propagative in nature right as soon as you stimulate one end of the nerve definitely the action potential is going to reach over the another end right but here the end plate potential which is non-propagative if you stimulate with the end plate potential it will remain at that site only right so now comes the concept of end plate potential and the development of miniature end plate potential right we know that acetylcholine it is a chemical substance it is not a, any part of physical continuity so ultimately it it is going to take a little bit time for the development of the action potential and opening of the uh, ligand gated sodium channels now there is development of miniature end plate potential what is miniature end plate potential that a uh, many small small potentials they are again sum up and they form a generalized action potential right so there is development of miniature end plate potential when 
the acetylcholine is going to bind with the receptor it opens the sodium channels it alters the resting membrane potential and then the end plate potential is developed which is non propagative in nature when many miniature end plate potential they sum up and they generate the action potential in the muscle fiber now comes the reuptake process reuptake process which is the last portion of this concept reuptake process is we have talked about the entry of calcium ions entry of sodium ions and again the channels will be closed after the concentration of acetylcholine is reduced to minimum but the most important thing is when do we see the degradation of the acetylcholine inside the synaptic cleft and it should be done because when a new action potential arrives it should be complete empty over the synaptic cleft so this acetylcholine which is uptaken by an enzyme which is known as an acetylcholine esterase let me write it over here it is acetyl choline esterase so acetylcholine esterase it is the enzyme which comes into the synaptic cleft and degrades the acetylcholine into two portion that is the acetate and the another portion that is choline so these are the two portions of acetylcholine when an acetylcholine esterase enzyme works over the acetylcholine present in the synaptic cleft now another thing is the choline substance which is again reuptaked from the synaptic cleft into the exon terminal and again this choline is very much helpful in the formation of new acetylcholine so when a new action potential arrives new acetylcholine will be formed and vesicles will be again burst up because of the entry of calcium ion and this process goes on so i hope this concept of neuromuscular junction is clear to you now as this is the important concept let me help you in revision of this neuromuscular junction that first you will mention the parts first is the exon terminal second is the skeletal muscle now assume in the picture that we have calcium ion channels over the exon terminal sodium ion channels in the skeletal muscles and we have synaptic vesicles in the exon terminal whereas we have receptors in the skeletal muscle now what is going to happen when an action potential arrives calcium ion enters into the exon terminal bursting off the synaptic vesicle occurs it releases the neurotransmitter which is acetylcholine acetylcholine from the presynaptic membrane and attaches over the receptor present over the post synaptic membrane area between these two membrane is termed as a synaptic cleft so acetylcholine is released actually into the synaptic cleft causes the entry of sodium ions from the extracellular fluid into the intracellularly and also helps in the development of the end plate potential so the end plate potential which is non propagative in nature it must be developed when many end plate potential they are sum up so they form a large potential which is capable to generate the action potential in the muscle and ultimately we see a muscular contraction reuptake process of acetylcholine acetylcholine esterase enzyme comes in the synaptic cleft degrades the acetylcholine into the acetate and choline choline is again taken up into the exon terminal and it is used in the formation of newer synaptic vesicles which is going to ultimately release the acetylcholine so i hope the concept of neuromuscular junction is clear to you thanks for watching the video till end if you have any doubts do let me know in the comment section spread this videos maximum so that one can understand the topic in a better way thank you so much